Welcome to Campus Student Worker Basics. I'm CL O'Callaghan, Director of Career Services. Throughout this video, you will hear from me and my colleague, Maureen Ruotolo, who coordinates campus student employment. As an employee of Georgian Court University, it is important for you to understand what is expected of you, as well as your rights and responsibilities. Let us start with prayer. Dear Lord, I thank you for this job and the blessings it provides. May you watch over me this day and keep me safe from harm. Create in me a willing spirit and a happy heart. Grant me the ambition to work hard and give me the strength to finish what I have started. May my hands always be prepared to help lighten another's load. And finally, Lord, remind me that the quality of my work is a reflection of you to those around me. Amen. Amen. At Georgian Court University, we strive to incorporate the Mercy Corps values, integrity, respect, compassion, service, and justice in all we do. As campus student workers, you can do these things in the ways listed. Carry your weight, show up on time, communicate challenges in real time, and respect confidentiality. Your supervisor is typically your main point of contact. In addition to hiring you, he, she, they will explain your duties, authorize your hours, and provide you with feedback regarding your performance. Though each supervisor develops their own expectations, they all incorporate the following. Be professional. Though you may not be working at the same level as permanent staff, you are an employee of the institution and you need to respect the position you have and your supervisor. You demonstrate this by arriving on time asking how you can help when you finish one assignment, being courteous and completing assignments in a timely fashion. Be helpful and respectful to your supervisor, office and department mates, guests, and other students. Later in the training, we will talk about how to handle workplace conflicts. But even if you experience a conflict, be helpful and respectful. Demonstrate a positive attitude and work well with others. Doing these things will give people a positive feeling about you. Finally, you may learn information about other students in the natural course of your work. The Family Education Right to Privacy Act, FERPA, which we will discuss further in this video, states that you cannot share information on other students. If you are given access to systems, this also means you are not authorized to look up information on or for other students unless it is specific to the task you have assigned and with supervisory permission. Though it is easy to see why supervisors feel these things are important, why should they be important to you? Think of your favorite restaurant or coffee shop. By contrast, is there a restaurant or coffee shop that you will not do business with? These establishments have reputations and reputations become their brand. Based on how you perform in this job, you will form or add to your reputation or brand. Your performance cultivates a relationship with your supervisor that can impact you moving forward. Potential employers appreciate references from current or former supervisors. A successful workplace experience gives you that reference. Additionally, even a campus job provides you with skills and experiences that will be invaluable to you as you move into career positions. These include the eight career readiness skills identified by the National Association of Colleges and Employers and listed here. Think about how your work enables you to demonstrate these important skills. If you need help identifying your skills in these areas or communicating what you have to offer, career services can help you. We can help you incorporate campus employment effectively onto your resume and into your interviews. We'll help you identify transferable skills and polish how you communicate them. As each position is unique, we won't discuss individual skills in this training, but meet with a career counselor or attend a resume writing workshop to learn more. People form an impression of you in the office within seconds. Dress appropriately. 
You are a college student and no one expects you to dress formally. Some departments may have a specific dress code, but overall, your appearance should be neat, clean, and put together. Your clothing should fit well, not too tight, too short, or too baggy. Avoid messy hair, excess, excess, excess makeup, or perfumes and colognes, or workout bunk. Keep your workspace neat. At the end of your shift, clean up and put things away. Recognize that you are part of a team. Let your supervisor or a member of the permanent staff know when you arrive and when you are leaving. Give them the opportunity to give you assignments or hear an update on what you were working on. Recognize that you are on the job. Unless you were told otherwise by a supervisor, put your phone away, only use your computer for work and do not study. If you have a personal emergency that requires your phone to be accessible or for you to take a call, communicate this with your supervisor at the start of your shift and only use it for that purpose. If the employer tells you you can use your phone or computer or that it allows you to study, follow their guidelines as to, as to when each of these are appropriate. Workplace language should be formal and appropriate. Do not use slang or curse words and do not raise your voice. If a friend comes into the department, still maintain that decorum. Similarly, Unless your supervisor sta states otherwise, you should not eat in the workplace. Beverages are typically acceptable, though it is a good idea to check with your supervisor. During this video, communication comes up frequently. The best way to ensure that you are viewed properly is to communicate with your boss and coworker. Let them know if you have questions or concerns. This doesn't mean ongoing idle chatter, but it does mean workplace relevant communication. You are not a robot. And in most workplaces, your supervisors and coworkers will want to get to know you. Don't be afraid to engage, but look for cues. When they are busy and distracted, respect that. When you are communicating with people who come into the office or coworkers you're meeting for the first time, introduce yourself. And if they've forgotten who you are, reintroduce yourself. Use please and thank you. Greet people with how may I help you. And when they are leaving, thank them for their visit and wish them well. At some point, most of you will be asked to answer a phone. As with all things, be professional. An example of the appropriate way to answer a call is Career Services, CLO Callahan speaking. How may I help you today? Sometimes people are not appropriate at the other end of the phone keep your cool. Regardless of how the person on the other end treats you, respond politely. If possible, answer their question or refer them to an appropriate staff member. If the person on the other end is not satisfied, tell them you will refer the call to your supervisor, either at that time if they're available or by message. But do not continue to engage. Though it is not correct, Sometimes people think they have to be aggressive to get their needs met, or they're frustrated and they take it out on the first person they encounter. To help the latter, if a person mentions that they have been transferred already, do everything you can to meet their needs in your office or department. If that is not possible, when transferring the call, do not hang up without telling the caller who you are transferring them to and how to reach that party in case the call drops. Also tell the person you are transferring the call to what the concern is. If the person the caller is trying to reach is not available, take a message. Prior to assuming responsibility for calls, ask your supervisor how they prefer you to take messages. Some may have a message pad. Others may want you to use email for messages. Either way, messages should include the caller's name and phone number, a short summary of their concern or issue, and when appropriate, a short um, when they are available or the deadline for which they need the response. Leave messages in agreed upon spaces. In my office, paper messages are attached to our door frames with a magnet. Whether you need to contact your employer or you have been asked by your supervisor to email someone, at some point you will probably need to use email. 
When emailing for the office, always use a departmental email or your Georgian court email. The university provides you with an email account. You should do university business with that account. When writing emails, use proper grammar and avoid abbreviations. Respond quickly and make sure you are permitted to give out the information they are seeking. With this, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Maureen. Hi, I'm Maureen. Once you are hired, a student worker will meet with their new supervisor to review and sign a student agreement form and a FERPA form. FERPA stands for the Family Educational Rights Privacy Act. When you sign the student agreement form, you are committing yourself to work responsibly, comport yourself professionally, and uphold the Mercy Corps values as you complete the duties assigned to you in your campus position. Part of this commitment is also to protect the confidentiality of any student whose information you access as part of your work. The Family Educational Rights Privacy Act prohibits the sharing of any student's information, records, or data with anyone other than that student. This slide shows examples of that information. Do not leave confidential information displayed on your computer or paper files open on your desk if you need to walk away. Do not share information with callers. Take a message to be given to your supervisor who will handle these requests. And do not share this information with other students or friends. Remember, you are signing a form promising to protect and secure the confidentiality of the student data you work with when you sign the FERPA form. The next step for, student, for new student workers is to complete the necessary payroll forms so you can be added to our ADP payroll system. Each student confirmed eligible for work study is awarded a maximum dollar amount which they can earn over the academic year. You should keep track of what you earn to ensure you do not run out of funds before the end of the year. You will have the option of having your paycheck directly deposited into a bank account, or you will be issued a Wisely credit card onto which your pay will be downloaded at the end of each pay period. Working at Georgian Court these last few years, I've come to recognize that you will be working with good people who have your best interests and the best interests of the institution at heart. However, sometimes issues come up in the workplace. Don't ignore them. Typically with communication, you can resolve them quickly. Your first line of defense should be your supervisor. Communicate your concerns with them. If you aren't sure how to approach them or cannot resolve the concern, contact me. Career Services serves as the human resources for campus student workers, and I will help you address those concerns. If the issues you are facing have to do with financial aid, reach out to the financial aid office, and this includes you're running out of an award. If the issues you have concerns with are regarding your pay or you're clocking in or clocking out, contact Mindy Hoffman in the payroll office. And if you're an international student working on our campus, remember that pretty much everything you do, you need to check in with your DSL, either Laura Grotewald or Denise Molnar. We really thank you for all the work you do for this institution. Without you, this place doesn't run. This concludes our presentation for today. If you have any questions or concerns, please contact Career Services. By email, it's easy, just careerservices at georgiancourt.edu. That way you won't forget us. We really, again, both Maureen and I thank you for your time and we wish you the best.